Hey guys, today I'll be comparing two of today's most popular electric crossovers, the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Which one's the winner? We'll find out. In this video, I'm not gonna spend nearly as much time on my Tesla Model Y because I already did that in many of my videos in this channel and I'm gonna leave you the links to, in the description box to those videos. Instead, I'm gonna spend most of the time on this Ford Mustang Mach-E. This is the crossover from Ford that is supposed to compete directly with the Model Y. This is a California Route 1. It's a very good option package. Ford offers four levels and this is uh, the third from the bottom or second from the top. And it has real wheel drive only but it has the extended battery package. One of the advantages that the Mustang Mach-E has over the Tesla Model Y is that it still offers a real wheel drive only package called the Select and it has a shorter range, but it is a great option because it gives you the introduction to an electric car and if you don't need many of the amenities of the higher trim levels, it will be a great option for some of you that just want to get an electric vehicle and don't care about all the fancy stuff. This right here is a very well optioned trim level. It sits at about $50,000. Let's go over some of the features of this car and see how we like it. Starting with the front end, I really like the front end of the Mustang Mach-E. If you remember my original review of my Tesla Model Y, I say how I find the front end a little plain. And this one is very elaborate. It has many lines. It has, some of them are functional, some of them are not. For example, this grill right here, it's not a grill, it's just a trim. And uh, it makes it, makes it look good because remember, this Electric vehicles don't need as much breathing as a normal combustion engine car. So this one is just for looks, but it does have a grill down here and it, it opens the ports depending on the needs of the car to cool the battery. And then I think the lights are a little bit better looking and it doesn't have any fog lights. In my Tesla Model Y, they all come with fog lights. So that's something that I would like to see on the Mustang Mach-E. It will be the implementation of fog lights. It doesn't have any, but it doesn't take away from the great looks of this car. Something I really like about the Mustang Mach-E is the dash to axle ratio because it gives you a longer hood normally associated with real wheel drive vehicles, sports vehicles, and of course the regular Mustang. Something particular that you're not gonna find in any of the Tesla Model Y trim levels is this body molding that is painted black that goes along with the pearl white in this vehicle, which it looks really nice. It's very similar to what the Toyota RAV4 Prime does with their color combination. It looks really cool and it also breaks away the monotony of the, of the crossover body shape. So remember, they all kind of look the same because they're looking for efficiency, they're looking for aerodynamics. And uh, in this case, they add that body molding that is painted black to give it kind of um, give you the idea that it's kind of a taller vehicle, which is not. These vehicles are actually very, very low to the ground. You're gonna find more of that optical illusion right here with this uh, black painted roof because the body stands all the way here but with this black top it kind of looks like a coupe but in reality it's just a boring crossover the mach -E doesn't do as good of a job at hiding the charging port it's right here exposed unlike the tesla model y that has it implemented in the real tail light so i kind of like the way tesla does it better in this case you have just like a regular car that have the the little fuel door exposed in the body it has it in this case in the front with the mach -E. Notice the clean look of the doors. They don't have any door handles. Instead, you have these lock buttons right here that you press with your thumb and then you pull from this lever. And then for the back, you don't even have a lever right here. What you do is you press the lock button and then pull from the side of the door. Not my favorite system, but if you remember anything from my original review, I said the same thing about the, the flush door handles on my Model Y. I think they're kind of flimsy. This looks like a better setup. Nevertheless, not my favorite. I kind of like how the Mustang Mach-E flares the fenders on the back like this, but this line is a little softer than that of the Model Y. I kind of like the one in the Model Y because it accentuates the line a little better, so it looks a little bit wider, but I think they're very similar actually. This just that this is a softer line on the body. And then in this case, the Mustang Mach-E, the, the hatchback just looks like a continuous line from the front. And in the case of the Model Y, it kind of tucks in towards the back. So it gives a kind of a wider um, rear end, which I like a little better than the rear end of the Mustang Mach-E. The wheel and tire setup for this particular trim level is uh, 225 by 60 18 inch wheels. So as you can see, the side of the tires, the sidewall is pretty high, which makes for a comfortable ride. Unfortunately, these tires tend to be a little bit slim and I don't like the way they look. They're usually associated this 
kind of setups are associated with uh, hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles, which is this the case. And then I haven't seen the GT, the Ford Mustang Mach-E GT. I know that those have a more aggressive wheel setup, but in this case, they're kind of tall and they make for a comfortable ride and for a more efficient vehicle. Now let's talk about rear ends. I like the minimalist look of the Tesla Model Y, but I wish it had a little bit more prominent taillights. The Mustang Mach-E instead has these sequential taillights that mimic the, the Mustang with this three lights and then this LED light that extends over here. I really like this look. I really like what the Mustang Mach-E did with the rear end. With this spoiler right here, it looks very sporty. What I'm not sure about, this is a shark fin right here. It looks very 2000s. I don't think he needs it. I wonder why Ford went with it. What I do like about this car is that they actually gave this car a rear window wiper. That's something that the Model Y doesn't have. Yes, I always complain about the lack of rear visibility with the Model Y, but it's not the case with the Mustang. So I'm glad that they offered this to be able to clean the rear window. I just wish they had tucked it underneath the rear spoiler for a cleaner look, but hey, it is what it is. And these sequential taillights, it looks very classy, very European. I like what they did with the Ford emblem right here. It's black and it has some texture, so it, it looks very nice in person. What you will notice about this car is that I was almost gonna say that the Mustang Mach-E doesn't have any Ford emblems on the body, and it does. It does have the name on the top of the windshield, but other than that, it doesn't have any Ford emblems at all. It's just carried the little Mustang logos, and I wonder why. Another batch that you will have is this one for this particular trim level, which is the California Route 1. I'm not a big fan of batches, so I'm not entirely in love with that batch. I think I could do without it. At the bottom of the rear end, you're gonna have this body molding right here, which is painted black. And then you have the brake light here, which reminds me of the Nissan 370Z that had that red light down here. So it looks very sporty. I like that. Something that I noticed about both the Mach-E and the Model Y is that neither of these two vehicles has an extended bumper. So it doesn't protrude at all. So if you were to get in a fender bender, I'm guessing that you're gonna meet that hit with the tailgate and that's gonna create a lot of damage. I'm not a big fan of these setups, but they both are very similar with the Mach-E having a little bit of a higher tailgate than the Model Y. When it comes to the cargo area, this particular trim level doesn't have a powered tailgate, but I know that other trim levels in the Mach-E do carry a tailgate that is powered. Unlike the, the Model Y that at all trim levels, they all come with the powered tailgate. So in this case, you just open it up and it has these shocks, but what it does have is this privacy curtain right here. It comes down and then you can just take it off and fold it like you would a visor something like this and then you have this very similar cargo area very similar to that in the model y i think in this one is about 29 cubic feet versus about 35 in the model y to be honest with you this carpet looks or feels nicer than that in my model y to access the full capacity of the cargo area you're gonna have to use these buttons right here. Unlike the Model Y that has this power release buttons on the, on the back, you're gonna have to extend yourself a little bit and push them forward. And then you unleash all the cargo capacity of this vehicle that is very, very similar to the one in the Model Y. So I like that fact that you can fold the seats almost flat, like in the case of my car, and the cargo area is very similar. I'm really liking this surface actually. And then you have a little bit more cargo area right here. And then you have a repair kit. Basically this is what, it's like a small air compressor in case you get a flat. And then the usual connectors for charging your car. So in a nutshell, the rear cargo areas of both cars is very similar. I think it's very generous. It falls almost flat. I kind of like the surface of this and I wish it had remote release buttons for the seats, but it's no biggie. I can just reach to the rear seats and push them forward. Depending on how I edited this video, I don't know if I already mentioned that it has a small compartment here. that is not as big as the one in the Tesla Model Y that has a repair kit. It's uh, basically like a small 12 volt compressor in case you get a flat. You do not get a spare tire, just like you don't get a spare tire on the Model Y and then you have 
a little packet with all the connectors that you need to charge this car when you are on the road. When it comes to the sitting position of this car, I, I like it. One thing that I noticed that is in general, a big difference between this and the Model Y is that this feels like a, like a normal conventional car. It has a lot more buttons for good or for bad. The side mirrors are very similar, maybe slightly bigger than those in the Model Y. So I think you're able to see a little bit more through the back. And then the rear view mirror is less obstructed because you don't you have that indentation on the cross column that goes across at the very back so you have that indentation that allows you to see through the rear window a little bit better than you can on the model y and the massive sunroof very very similar to the one in the model y and they're also similar in the fact that they don't have a liner so you're not able to close it there's no rolling liner that you can actually close so you can see the california sun oozing through at midday i noticed that the seats are more comfortable on the tesla model y it's just that the material the cushioning of the model y seems to be a little bit softer very very uh, nice it's like sitting in a cloud that's one of the features that i really like about our model y these are very very good seats when it comes to the rear seat, it's very spacey as well. Very similar to what you find in the Model Y. Very similar legroom. I feel very comfortable here. The only difference being, I don't think these seats recline on the Mach-E. They do in the Model Y, but please let me know in the comments if the seats on the Mach-E recline, at least in any other trim level, because I couldn't find the lever to recline this seat. Um, that's only that's the only difference as far as anything else same is a continuation of the materials in the front uh, a mix of uh, injected molding then some softer vinyl and then cheap plastic here and like the model y these seats have a a vinyl cover so they are they have upholstery to cover the back so it's a softer feel i think in that sense it might be a little better, but I'm not impressed with the stitching and the overall fit and finish of the rear of this seat. So if you're sitting right here, it doesn't look the highest quality possible. And then you can also bring this down to use as a cup holder or as an armrest. This vehicle comes with four handles here um, on the sides of the roof. And like my car, the Tesla Model Y doesn't have any of this. So sometimes people, older people may have a problem climbing out or in the vehicle, and this might help. Well, the Model Y doesn't have them. Here you do have a connector for a, uh, you have a USB connector and a USB-C to recharge your mobile devices. That's pretty cool. And as well as these pockets right here, which are basically super small, useless, eerily, very similar in size to those that you find in the Model Y. It is my impression that the sunroof in the Mach-E may be a little bit narrower, maybe a little bit smaller. But what it does have is it has this indentation right here that allows for a little bit more headroom. And then it has this extra material here that uh, blocks a little bit of your view of the sky above you. And the Mustang Mach-E comes with six color choices, unlike the Model Y that only comes with five. So that may be a, a strong point, but for the Mustang Mach-E is the fact that you have a little bit more options. This is the California route trim level, which is the third from the bottom, second from the top. And at that, you do not get a power seat. Sometimes you sacrifice one thing for another. So you do have a power seat here, but not on the passenger side. Unlike the Model Y, because the Model Y at the base model, which is the extended range, uh, the long range, you do have all the amenities that I will have on my Model Y performance. One feature that you're going to find in this car that you cannot find in the Model Y, regardless of trim level, is Apple CarPlay and I think Android Auto as well. But for sure, you have Apple CarPlay. And then, like I said earlier, you have a lot of control levels here. So you have the the cruise control right here adaptive cruise control access right here and then you have your your traditional buttons you don't have the flat bottom like you do in the model y i do find the model y steering wheel to be nicer this is a little bit on the skinny side and when you look at the stitching it just doesn't look as consistent it looks a little bit cheap in that regard but it is it is a nice steering wheel i just don't find it 
as quality oriented as the one on the Model Y. One thing that I really like about this car is that you do have this second nano screen right here. It's very, very narrow, but it's wide. And you have the inf basic information that you're used to. You have your speedometer, you have where, um, your gear selector status, and then you have your range available. And then you have minor things like it reminds you that you have the, the emergency um, brake on, stuff like that. I like the clarity of the controls right here. You have your automated air conditioner controls right here, and I think they're very readily available. Another thing that I really like about this car that the Model Y has, that doesn't have, I'm sorry, is a 360 camera. I'm, I cannot get over the fact that the Tesla Model Y has so many cameras, yet it cannot implement this beauty right here. And then you have this automatic front camera that it gives you access to what's going on when you're pulling in into like a parking spot that is a box so that you don't hit the curb. I really like this feature on this car and the fact that it has the 360 camera. And then when you come to the sides right here, it's a very similar material um, scheme than what you have in the Model Y. You have a sort of injected molded um, finish right here is not as nice as the one in the Model Y. Then you have a softer vinyl here. And then as you get down, you, you have this um, contrasting stitching like you have in the Model Y and it's actually stitching, is this not fake, it's actually um, stitching. And then you have a speaker right here and it's covered with the fabric. And then when you come down here, you have this cheap material. So at the end of the day, it's still an American car. So you have these cheap materials. Um, you have one touch windows for all four windows, which is pretty cool. And then you have this quick access to your controls for the mirrors, which I think is pretty cool. Unlike on the Model Y that you have to access it through the uh, through the center screen. So that's something I really like. And then something that is old school right here is this three memory settings that in the Model Y, they're on the top of your screen. So they're very accessible. So you put it on a EC entry and then my wife has a setting. I have my own setting and then it adjusts everything to your liking. So I like that more than I like it on this um, this Mustang. But the, the, the fact that it's available to you here on the side physical is something that you might like better. And then when it comes to opening the door, you have this weird handle right here. I'm not sure what to think of it. Let me know in the comments what you think of this handle. It just doesn't, doesn't tell me much. It doesn't look like something I would like to have in my car, but it's there. So there you go. It is mechanical. Unlike the Model Y that you press a button towards here and then you can just push it out. In this case, it's fully mechanical. Now let's go to, for example, things like the lights. You can do the headlights, you can do off, you can do parking lights, you can do automatic, and you can do on. This is something that in the Tesla Model Y, you can also move, you have to use the center screen for this. So I kind of like this, but I can live without it because I cannot remember the last time I had to change my light settings for any reason. When it comes to charging your phone, you have room for one phone and then you have USB connector right here and a USB-C. I have never been a fan of a knob gear selector like this one. To me, I never had one, so I never got used to them. I do find them a little bit counterintuitive. So not my favorite. When I first got my Model Y and it had the gear selector over here, I didn't like it either. I thought it was kind of flimsy and it just looked like a cheap car, but I'm kind of used to this setup now. And then you have a physical parking brake, emergency brake. Something that is different between this and the Model Y is that in the Model Y, the emergency light, the emergency brake is on as soon as you put it in park. So when you put it in park, this comes on automatically. I kind of like the cleaner look of the center console in the Model Y. This seems to me a little busy. And in the Model Y, just it's just plain. But in this one, you have that extra tray down here which is cool, but I do like the setup of the Model Y that it hides um, most of these things. And you can live here for a little bit more storage. And then you have a 12 volt outlet like you would find also on the Model Y. So in that regard, it's very similar, but when you close it, you can close it like this, or you can bring this down like this as well. Um, Material-wise, I don't have problems at all. As I said, I like this contrasting stitching. 
Um, I like the, I think this is vinyl. I'm not sure if it's leather. I don't think it's leather, but nevertheless, it's, it feels nice and it's soft. And then the dash, it just has a continuous fabric surface from one end to the other. And my guess is that there has to be speakers down there or at least in different trim levels, they, max, they, they may max out the amount of speakers that this vehicle may carry. And then you have this uh, fake aluminum um, trim here or here. And then you have the conventional air vents, unlike the Model Y that, that they're hidden. So I kind of like the clean look of the Model Y, but I love the fact that whenever you just want to move them, you can just move them like that instead of having to go to the screen like you do on the Model Y. I think you have to take the pros with the cons when it comes to a vehicle. A lot of us have complained about the lack of physical buttons and controls in the Model Y. And I think this vehicle is a great blend between um, functionality and the availability of these uh, physical buttons and controls that make, make the drive less distracting than that of the Model Y. And I'm going to take this opportunity to show you the front compartment. In this vehicle, you have the release lever right here and you pull it and let's go see and compare both. This is a very similar front trunk as the one on the Model Y, but this one has this cool organizer here. Honestly, it wouldn't serve me a purpose. I will probably take it off because I do need the space as a whole, but it seems like you can take it off. And then you have this emergency release that glows in the dark in case you lock somebody very 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 small in this front compartment the cargo capacity the weight limit that this vehicle can carry is 395 kilograms or 872 pounds let's go over to my car and my car is 375 kilograms very similar very similar a little bit less for the model y now we're gonna go for a drive. I've never been a big fan of this knob gear selector. I've seen it in some Chrysler products. I've never been a fan of it. I hope you can hear some of those rattles that I hear. Very similar to what I find in my car. So if I close my eyes, I almost feel like I'm in my own Tesla Model Y. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You tell me. This vehicle comes in three driving modes, uh, Whisper, Engage, and Unbridle. I guess the, the normal setting will be Engage. It offers a good blend of torque and also comfort. What I don't like about this car is that it has a propulsion sound, which is uh, just a fake engine noise. For those of you that miss your internal combustion engine, and I'm gonna hold this camera. Can you hear that? Sounds like I'm in a video game, right? <laughs> I don't like it. Luckily, you're able to disengage it. This vehicle also comes with single pedal driving, but you're able to disable it in case you want to drive it like a normal vehicle that when you let go of the go pedal, it still goes coasting. I don't like it when it's in single pedal driving because it's very grabby. So when I come to a full stop, it feels like it grabs onto something. So it's kind of sticky. Just I cannot describe it too well but it's not as well implemented as that on the Model Y. And the Model Y is very natural. I'm so used to the single pedal driving um, that it's such a convenience because I, I already know how the car is gonna react and how what are the brake distances. So sometimes just by letting go of the go pedal, you come to a full stop right at the intersection. And I like that part. With this one, it seems like it's a, sorry. With this one, it seems like it's a little bit less intrusive. The braking is a little bit more gradual but when it comes to the full stop, you feel like something just grabbed and you can hear that clunking sound when it disengages as well. I do feel, I do hear a little bit of wind noise coming from this side. Can you hear that? That's not good, right? <laughs> so hopefully I'm able to transfer this in a way that you can hear that sound coming from all over the, the cabin. Um, so it seems like there's some squeaks and some rattles in this vehicle. Um, they're a little bit more or a little bit louder than they are on the Model Y. I mean, it's a vehicle with uh, less than 2,000 miles. Mine has about 5,000, so rattles shouldn't be there. Other than that, it is a very fast car. I mean, this is probably, probably as fast as you need a car to be because from what I hear, I think it's a zero to 16, five point something. And those times are 
basically what the 350 or the 370Z was hitting about 10 years ago or the IS350. They're very respectful times. I don't think you need more than this. I do feel a little bit more body roll in this car. Let's try to engage the cruise control. That's it. All I had to do is press one button and then like a normal car with your thumb, you can lower or raise the speed. And then you have the lane keeping assist, very similar to the one in my Model Y. So it does a great job at keeping you in the lane. And then it just told me that I need to grab onto the steering wheel. But for the most part, it is very good. A little bit more body than the Tesla. Seems like the Tesla is very precise, very in the center of the lane. And then seems like when I get in a bumpy road, the steering wheel wobbles a little bit to the sides. Not as precise as the Model Y. Nevertheless, a really good system. This will definitely take the edge of driving. The Mustang mach -E also comes with cross-traffic sensor. So it's very handy when you're trying to get out of our parking spot in a parking lot and the Tesla Model Y doesn't have it. This has been my honest review and comparison of the Mustang Mach-E and the Tesla Model Y. Which one is the better choice? That's entirely up to you. One advantage that the Mustang Mach-E may present over the Model Y is that it still qualifies for the federal tax credit that is not available for, te for Tesla. It's for $7,500 and that's a huge, huge advantage. Also, the fact that you can obtain this vehicle at a very, very stock trim level, which is called the Select, for about $43,000. And then you can build from there. This has more complications when it comes to ordering because it has four trim levels available at this moment. And as option, this one sits at about $50,000. Just remember that some of these Mustang mach -E's are real wheel drive only, which is the case of this California route trim level. It, it only comes with an extended range battery, but only real wheel drive. Unlike the Tesla Model Y, that they all have that amazing all wheel drive system available at the lesser trim level. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.